Welcome to Euristica. It's a remote island community where I've spent a lot of time this year. Life there is simpler in many ways than here. There's only 100 people for a start. But it has its own economy, its own culture, and many of the same dynamics and complexities as anywhere. I've come to know and care about the people of Euristica, and I'm going to share some of their stories with you today. Oh, but one thing. None of them are real. Euristica is a computer simulation. If you've heard of games like The Sims or Civilization, where you set up the parameters for how people behave, how society is structured, stand back and see what happens. Euristica is a bit like that. But it has a special purpose. It allows us to ask questions about things that are broken in society and try out solutions that might be too risky or too radical to test in real life. Think of it as a laboratory for social thought experiments. A lot of the experiments that I run in Heuristica are about inequality and discrimination. And so I programmed Heuristica so everyone on the island has an ethnicity and a way of expressing their gender, as well as a lot of other less visible characteristics like their interests, their talents at work, and their personalities. And let me introduce you to two of the personalities on Heuristica. This is Cynthia. She's named after a friend of mine. She's a great scientist. She's a keen runner and a bit of a geek. Then there's Brad. I think we all know a Brad. He might not be the sharpest cookie in the toolbox, but he looks very respectable in a suit and tie. And he knows how to play the game. Whenever I run an experiment in Heuristica, I'm always rooting for Cynthia. And yet, Brad so often seems to end up ahead. People ask me what it's like in Heuristica. What's the lifestyle? What's the culture? Well, this is a picture of the weather. And uh, <laughs> I thought I'd share with you a page from last year's best-selling novel. <laughs> As you can see, the language they speak there is a dialect of double Dutch. But while Heuristica is built out of code, it's also built on economics, a new kind of economics. Traditional economics pays some attention to making a better society, but the solutions that it offers are so narrow that for many people, economists have lost all credibility in talking about this stuff. It's all about free markets and economic growth. Now, I like free markets and economic growth, but they're definitely not enough. My work is in cognitive and behavioral economics. That brings psychology into economics, so it lets us look at all the biases, the assumptions, the mental shortcuts, and the emotions that really drive our choices. And that makes economics both a more realistic and also a more human discipline. So I'm going to use Heuristica today to look at a problem that's become increasingly important to me. And it starts with a story of how I first noticed that people were treating me a little strangely. So I'm 19. I've just walked into the office of my bank manager and I want to borrow £7,000 to start a business. This is 1995 and I'm talking about something called the internet, which I'm pretty sure the guy across from me has never heard of. And I'm probably on the edge of being in a very polite, British way, thrown out in my ear. But I'm wearing a suit. I have the same color of skin as he does. I speak in an accent he's familiar with. And when I tell him I have a first-class degree from Glasgow University, suddenly I feel his attitude change. I must be the right kind of person. And in the next day's post, sure enough, a letter arrives, and they're going to give me the money. It was almost too easy. And now I realize that this is something called privilege. It's the set of invisible assumptions and attitudes that influence how we treat each other and often lead to certain groups in society getting more opportunity, more influence, and being in a position to then pass those attitudes and assumptions down to the next generation in a vicious cycle. Once you spot it, you can see it in 100 places, from the customer who trusts me because I'm male to the airport security line that I don't get pulled out of. And of course, from where I am, there's a thousand more places where I don't see it. W.E.B. Dubois first talked in the 30s about this, a psychological wage earned by white workers. Not a monetary wage, but a wage in freedom, in access, and in the ability to just go where they wanted and uh, do what they wanted. Peggy McIntosh made the idea of privilege popular with her famous essay on the invisible knapsack of unearned assets that is carried around 
by privileged people. And we see it still today. The real Cynthia told me a story of a company who saw her CV, they liked her, they invited her in for an interview. And then suddenly, when they met her in person, the job required oh, more experience in finance. I wonder why. Now, even though I've benefited from privilege, I don't want it to exist. It's frustrating. Humanity can't achieve its potential if it's giving special treatment to one group. And I've seen the pain and the waste of talent of people around me who don't get access to the places in society where they can flourish. And to be quite selfish about it, it's kind of boring to be surrounded in my office building with people who just look and sound like me. But who am I to talk about privilege? Clearly, I've benefited from it. I'm a white man. I'm middle class. I'm educated. I'm straight and cis, not too old, not too young. I even have an accent that's supposed to make me sound extra trustworthy. <laughs> Every advantage you can imagine. And that's right. We, the first people we must listen to in this are the people who have been on the other side of privilege. But sometimes, to dismantle a system, it helps to have someone on the inside. And the sad fact is that people who look like me sometimes only listen to people who look like me. So if I can use my voice and evidence like Heuristica to amplify the voices of the people they don't listen to, I hope that is a worthwhile contribution. So that's why I built Heuristica. We know about the biases that people have. We know about some of the statistics about inequality in society, but we don't know the pathway from one to the other. That's what Heuristica lets us uncover, and that's what might let us fix it. So let's see how privilege plays out on Heuristica. We start by creating an employment market, companies that employ people. Most of these companies, like the real world, founded by people of one ethnicity and one gender. And these companies also have biases in their recruitment, just like Cynthia faced. This is the formula for one of those biases. This is what gives you the advantage if the company that you're applying to unconsciously prefers people who look like you. But it's not just formulas and it's not just code. I also wanted to listen to people. And so here are some of the things that I heard when I spoke to people about their experiences of privilege. They don't listen to me in meetings, only to my male colleagues. Everyone on the interview panel was white. I have to work extra hard just to get to where other people start out. So I built all these messages into Heuristica, and that lets us run an experiment. So here we are, 1966, the beginning of our experiment. Everyone's just left school or university. They're just starting their careers. And it starts out kind of equal. Then what happens? We set the clock forward, and we start to see the inequality appearing. At the left there, you can see people who've obviously joined an investment bank or started a dot-com company. <laughs> and up there, you can see Brad and Cynthia. At the end of 50 years, Brad has paid 22% more than Cynthia. And it's definitely not on merit, I can tell you that. So we have now created a world that looks a bit like the real world we live in. And here's the exciting part. Now we get to change things and see how to fix it. So picture me hunched over my computer keyboard late at night, trying out different formulas, different policies to see how can we do something about this. It's not an easy problem. I went to look at the research literature, and I also went to talk to companies and see what they were doing. But that's where I found some, something troubling, an extra problem. And that is that there are people out there who just don't think this is an issue. They'll give you excuses. They'll tell you why it doesn't matter. It's not as important as all that, or why they don't have a part to play in fixing it. But the great thing about Heuristica is when you hear one of these excuses, we've got a secret weapon. We can test it out and see if it's true. So let's start with this one. This was said to me by the co-founder of a company that just happened to be 80% male, although the co-founder herself was a woman. If this company really is unbiased, and I'm sure that they don't overtly uh, discriminate, how would they even know who the best people are? Well, we know from psychology research that the people who you'll model as being skillful and talented are the ones who look already successful around you. And if historically that's mostly white men, then white men are the ones who are going to get the advantage and get the best offers. And that's exactly what we see. Run the simulation, and Brad is still paid 13% more than Cynthia, even without an overt prejudice at the base. Now this one you often hear from economists, because of course the free market will sort everything. 
if women really were paid less, well, companies would just pay them less and make more profit, and then everything would even itself out in the end. Well, apart from how exploitative that sounds, does it even work? No. We can program Heuristica so that there are several companies that only employ women, but it doesn't outcompete and it doesn't make everyone else behave better. There's still a gap at the end of 50 years. Some people think this is a problem of the past, and, well, more women than men go to university now, and the pay gap for professionals in their 20s, according to some stats, doesn't exist. Well, if that's true, then presumably when we run the clock forward, we'll see that everything is fine. And so we test Heuristica, instead of going back in time, we go forward. We run 50 years ahead, and there's still the echoes of today's inequality. And that 5% might seem better than today, but that, over Cynthia's career, is $200,000. That's a house. And of course, people's choices do make a difference to their success. But where do choices come from? They're not made in isolation. Choices come from culture. They come from the inequalities that people already face. And you will get judged not on the choices that you make, but the choices that other people think you might make. And that is the result, 10% gap. So just eliminating prejudice isn't enough. Inequality is too entrenched. So what can we do? Well, one of those late night programming sessions, I come up with something. So we start from a clean slate. Let's say that we've all taken our implicit association test, we've found out our unconscious biases, and we've trained ourselves not to act on them. Our companies all have generous and equal childcare policies. There's one more thing we have to do. These companies need to start hiring for diversity. So if every company on Heuristica starts to look around, look at its workforce, see who's underrepresented, and make better offers to the people who are not reflected in its workforce, well, let's see what happens then. Everything starts off roughly the same. And at the beginning, the companies that do this don't do so well. There's still enough old boys' networks to resist. But there's a tipping point. And once 40% of the companies start to implement this policy, it's the ones who don't who start to lose out. And finally, we have Cynthia up where she deserves, ahead of Brad, and the pay gap is eliminated. There's a couple of reasons for this. One is that if you're not hiring for diversity, you're going to miss out on some of the best candidates. If you want to take the top 10 programmers in Heuristica, but you're only recruiting from a quarter of the population, of course you're going to miss out on some good talent. And the other is that if you're selling into a diverse society, you need to be able to speak to them. You need to be able to talk their language. And you can only do that if the people who work for you represent them. Privilege doesn't just exist in hiring and employment and pay, of course. It's in the justice system. It's in schools, in politics, in relationships even. But Heuristica lets us explore all those things too. And what we've learned about privilege we can try more widely. I'm building a version of Heuristica now for international development so we can see what do economically poorer countries have to do to make themselves better off. It can be used to explore the psychology and economics behind long-term unemployment and even political solutions to ethnic and religious conflict. The history of the world is a story of one experiment after another. America was described as a grand experiment in democracy, an experiment that for sure got many things wrong, but they're gradually being fixed over the decades. Across the world, from India to Brazil to Ireland to China, people have done terrible things to each other in the name of making a better society. The civil rights movement in the US was called the Great Experiment of Equality, and the Soviet Union was called the Great Experiment of Socialism. And who knows what they're going to call the experiment Britain is in the middle of, withdrawing from the European Union. For thousands of years, powerful people have tested out their ideas on the societies they lived in and the societies they didn't live in. The successes and the failures of those experiments have taught us to be better at being human, but the price of the failures has been paid in blood. What if there were a way for us to find out what ideas might work in the safe environment of a computer program? What if there were a way to test without trying out our policies by force on the lives of a billion people. That's what Heuristica can let us do. And I look forward to a day when humanity's biggest questions can be answered without causing humanity's greatest tragedies. <laughs>